Libraries are building a cathedral. I'm Jenny Bird, the library director at the McMinnville Public Library. Hopefully you've all had a chance to read what's on the screen. I've always liked this short story. It's simple, yet it really paints a picture of how understanding of the larger vision can change your entire outlook. And I think of this often when I'm working with library staff and volunteers. Because I appreciate that all the work that we do, from putting a book on the shelf, to budgeting, to creating a friendly atmosphere, all contributes to building a wonderful library. My hope is that you leave this session with some tools to create a vision of your best library, and a process to get there, while including staff and volunteers so that everyone understands that they are building a cathedral. We've gathered staff from the McMinnville Public Library to talk with you about how together we're moving towards our vision of the best library using creative structure. You'll learn the concepts of creative structure from, from Kimberly Hansen Rodriguez. I'll share our implementation of those concepts, and then you'll hear from Sam Geary about the before and after of utilizing creative structure at our library. Then we'll give you a chance to practice this, these new ideas. And lastly, we'll talk about that, how the concepts that we discuss can be used to create a strategic plan that really works at all levels of your organization so that everyone feels that they are not laying bricks but building a cathedral. So let's get started with Kim Ree stretching our brains. I'm gonna just go ahead and step over here. I feel more comfortable standing. <laughs> okay, now when we started this, I had had a desire to build and create within our library in a really remarkable way, just beyond what we thought would ever be possible on a grand scale. And I began to think about how we could create on that scale outside of our library box. So I started looking for some information and I came across a wonderful book called The Path of Least Resistance by, uh, by Robert Fritz and he is very well known in uh, he is actually the father of the creative structural work. He works a lot with organizations all over the world. He has written multiple books, and he has uh, various classes. He does movie projects. He, one of his most famous is the Rwanda Project, which was uh, quite a remarkable uh, creation of his. And he also creates music. So he's 81 years old, and, or eight years old this year, and he has done a lot in his life and I attended his Fundamentals of Structural Thinking course in June 2021, and it was just incredible. So I brought all the concepts to Jenny to see what we could do on, for our own library. And what we found was that, yeah, we could, we could do this. And she got excited about it, and we began to do the implementation. And before I go further, I'd like to ask you, what do you think a structure is? What is a structure? Does anybody have any? Framework. A framework, yeah. Yeah, good. Framework. Anybody else? Okay. Support. Yeah. Support. Yeah. Support, that's good. Anybody else have any suggestions? Yeah, that's good. Anything that's built. Anything that's built, yeah. Yeah, so that's very correct. You know, as a framework, as, as anything is built, it's it's, um, it's things working together. So a structure, as we're going to define it here, is something that's whole. A whole thing. And it is made up of various parts. So a structure is a whole thing made up of parts. Now think about various structures. Uh, everything in physical reality is a structure. A spider web is a structure. It's a whole thing made up of parts. A building is a structure, it's a whole thing that's made up of parts. Another structure is a rocking chair. A rocking chair is a structure, it goes back and forth, it's a whole thing made up of parts. And a river is also a structure, it is a structure with banks that flows, it's a structure too. Structures have, exist in absolutely everything and your libraries are also structures. They are a whole thing made up of parts. Now how a structure behaves is how it's going, how the structure behaves is dependent upon the structure itself. So in physical reality and in organizations, particularly, we have two 
basic structures. One structure is an oscillating pattern, an oscillating structure. And in an oscillating structure, the success that you have is neutralized, it goes backwards. So every time you have a success, it goes backwards. It's intended to go back and forth like a rocking chair. So an oscillating structure is something we frequently find ourselves in, in organizations. Another structure is an advancing structure. So we have the two basic structures, the oscillating structure and the advancing structure. So in an advancing structure, think about a river. It has the two banks and the water, and the gravity is pulling the water downhill. How something responds, behaves, what it does is all dependent upon its structure. So what we're going to be talking about is working more frequently in the advancing structure instead of going back and forth. Oscillating structures are created when we have competing desires. For instance, you might have a desire for some stability like we did during the pandemic. You know, it was crazy. We all desired some stability. And you might also have some desire for growth. Well, those are two competing structures. And as one is pulled toward, the other one is moved away from, and it creates this back and forth and back and forth. And in personal life, you could think about it like the diet, the back and forth, back and forth. You lose some weight. Oh, I don't have the tension anymore. I'm going to go, you know, it goes back and forth. So this is how things work. And they work this way within organizations too. And how something goes forward in a flowing structure, an advancing structure, or back and forth and back and forth is all dependent on how you set up that structure. So that is the basic concept of structure. Kimberly just introduced a few concepts that I want to recap. She talked about oscillating structure, where, we'll, where we are pulled in competing directions. She talked about advancing structure, which moves us forward and creates momentum. Are there any questions about these concepts or terms? Great. Okay, so one experience that Kimberly mentioned a little bit that we all shared was that, that created an oscillating structure was the pandemic. It was a great disruptor and it kept us in an oscillating structure for a time. As public libraries, we have a desire to provide service. And we were all used to basing that service on actually interacting with people in person. And then of course, we also have a desire as public servants to create safety. And the pandemic was telling us, you can't be, to create safety, you have to not be around people. So here we have this oscillating structure of service to people and safety, no people. And, how, and, and that was a real uh, difficult struggle, I'm sure, for all of us. How are we going to still create service while remaining safe? So service and safety were competing desires for a time and they kept us in an oscillating structure. To move to an advancing structure, one that moves forward, we had to choose to deliver library service and do it safely. We had to have a creative way to figure out how to deliver on this vision. We had to use creative visioning. I'm sure we all did it. We all did it in different ways. Some, you know, borrowing from one another as we, as we often do. Um, for McMinnville Public Library, the way to deliver a library service safely led to a robust home delivery system that is actually still in place today. And we also developed safe methods to open the library to patrons within just a few months. This had a lot to do with the fact that we really wanted to focus on service. How are we going to continue to serve our patrons in the in as best way as we, as we can while continuing to keep them safe. So I use the term creative visioning here to explain how we move from an oscillating structure to an advancing structure, giving us the momentum to move forward. And Kimberly's going to talk about creative visioning versus problem solving. We're all used to thinking about things in the sense of solving problems, it's how we're brought up. And we think, well, we have a problem, we want to resolve it, and this is how we think about things. However, we're going to talk about vision today and how 
vision is what you want to create. So your vision, you all are accustomed to your vision, what you want to create in whatever situation that you're in. And I would like to look at this, let's look at this from the example of an artist. Because an artist is very frequently, you know, they're, they're very much focused on what it is they want to create, for instance, with a painting or a sculpture or whatever it is that they want to create. So this is how I think about everything I want to do. It's what do I want to create here? What do I want to create here? What is it? This is very different than problem solving because in problem solving what we're doing is we are looking at the problem. And that's really a great thing to do when the building's on fire. If the building's on fire, you don't want to sit here and think about your vision. No, you want to get out of the building, right? However, it's not all that effective when it comes to creating what it is you want. So problem solving and creating are two very different things. You can solve every single problem that you've ever had and still not have what you want. So we're going to be talking about a slightly different way of doing it today. The bigger the problem, the reason it is, is it goes like this. You have a high intensity problem, okay? So that leads you to an action to try to solve your problem. And then that leads to less intensity of the action. And this leads to the problem, you know, less action, the problem intensifies again, and then you're focused right again on the problem. So it's going like this, this is the structure. High intensity of problem, then you want to take some action to solve the problem. That makes sense. And then there's less of a problem. So that leads to less action. And then the problem kicks up again. And this could also happen with multiple problems. So you might have a situation where you have multiple problems going on at the same time. You're focused on one problem. And OK, we've got some of that resolved. And now another thing kicks up. And now we're focused on that and trying to solve that problem. So it's, a, it's this continual focus on the problem, which leads to the action, because we're continually focusing on and creating whatever we're focused on. So it's leading to the action of solving the problem. However, it really isn't creating, because problem solving and creating are two different things. So this is, one, this is the model of the problem solving. We've been there. We've all been there. And it even, even is in our personal lives. In the diet area, you see that goes back and forth, back and forth. This is the oscillating pattern that I was talking about. So instead of focusing on the problem, you can focus in a different way. And we're going to be talking about that. OK, before we're able to talk about getting out of problem solving, my goal is to share how we got stuck in problem solving. Um, so. I'm one of the children's librarians, but one of the hats I wear is as a co-leader of our marketing and communications committee. So um, during the pandemic, we knew that our marketing efforts were scattershot. People didn't know that we were open. Um, they didn't know how to access our library services. And so we had some time during the pandemic to figure this out. And we knew that we needed to let our community know what was going on. So we made a goal. Let's do marketing better. Let's write a marketing plan and let's do marketing better. This felt like a good goal to us. What we didn't realize was that one, we were problem solving. And two, we didn't actually know what we wanted. Um, so this led to many iterations of a marketing plan. So my coworker Crystal and I, we would write up a marketing, marketing plan, we would present it to Jenny, and she said, no, that's not it. Oh my gosh, so like, we felt really defeated, we felt very frustrated, we didn't know what we were going for. And this is because, I mean, and, and this was before we had this tool that we're trying to share with you today. Um, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, we were focused on a problem, and our problem was our marketing sucks. We want to do it better, but we didn't know what that meant. Um, so
so we weren't focused on the behaviors and the benefits of what marketing could do for us. Um, we didn't know what successful marketing looked like. And so again, we were, we were doing that, uh, spinning the wheel of like, let's try this, let's try this. Um, we, we weren't gaining any traction. Um, so in retrospect, now that we do kind of have this tool, this concept of creative structure, we see what we were missing. Um, we were stuck in problem solving, and once we were able to articulate what we wanted, again, we didn't have the language, we didn't say we created a vision, we just articulated what we wanted, that's when we were able to get, make progress. Um, so our ability to specify what marketing would lead to for the behaviors of our community that's when we were able to see progress. And I will elaborate on that later um, because it is nice to see like, okay, I'm talking about the problems, but I will share our successes. Uh, Kimberly will explain more about the creative structure and the creative visioning process. Okay. So I want to talk about, again, another way than doing the problem solving approach. And that is focusing on your vision. Your vision. What is it? What is it that you want to create? What do you want to create? This for us meant a variety of things. We had several things we wanted to create. One was we wanted to create great marketing. We wanted to create a marketing committee that would produce professional level marketing, which we have at this point. And we then, after you focus on what you want to create, we were then like, well, where are we now in relationship between what you want to create? So there's your vision. What do you want to create? And where are you now in relationship to that? Not where are you now and it's completely divorced from it. It's where in relationship to that. What that does is it sets up a tension between two points, which will seek resolution. So where do you want to create? What do you want to create? And you know, where are you now? Those are the two basic concepts. And I want to ask you a little something about how you feel personally about tension. What do you, does everybody feel uncomfortable when you think about the word tension? Is that kind of an uncomfortable feeling? Yeah? Yeah? Well, tension is actually a part of the creative process. And so if we're not trying to get rid of tension, we're kind of, eh, it's just not gonna work. It's just not. Tension is something that is going to be there for the creative process because what it does is it creates action on our part because we want to resolve that tension. So we have what it is we want, our vision, where we are now, and then there is the action that's going to be like a bridge to bring us from here to there. The bridge. Tension seeks resolution. And this happens with everything. When you have a river and the gravity's pulling downhill, that tension is going to seek resolution. And if you think about things in your own life, can anybody think about something where you had tension that sought resolution? Yeah? Yeah? We're even born that way. Tension seeks resolution, always. Mother and dad got together, tension sought resolution, <laughs> you know? So, so it will always work that way. We have our, it's just important to think about the vision, getting what you want to create. And when you do this, it's not because you're trying to resolve a problem. It doesn't work like that. It's, you're creating this like the artist creates a painting and the reason you're creating this is for no other reason than this is something you would love to create. This is something you want. You want it. You want it just because you want it. It's not to solve any kind of issue. It's because you want it. That's how an artist creates. An artist doesn't say here, I'm going to solve the problem of not having a painting right now. No, it doesn't work like that. I'm going to create this, and this is what my vision is, that I'm going to apply this paint. I'm going to mold this clay. I'm going to create this. And we can do the very same thing within our libraries. We can look at the situation, you know, look at what it is we want to create. What do you want to create in a 
um, in your circulation system? What new project do you want to create? Where are you now in relationship to that creation? And you step out of that, and what action can you take? It will always be something, something will occur, an idea will occur to move you from where you are now, in relate, which is in relationship to your creation, to where you want to go. It's really kind of simple. So I'd like to ask all of you, is what's resonating for you right now about what we've shared so far? Any, any thoughts about what we've shared so far? Yeah. Um, so I'm Suzanne Harold with Astoria. We're gonna be renovating our library in the next year or so. And it's occurring to me, like we really just need to pull together what we want that to look like so that all the pieces fall in. So yes, yeah, so we're not playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> that really is what it's like. It's like a whack-a-mole. You got a problem. Oh, yeah. Whack! I'm gonna get rid of that problem. I'm gonna kick it to the curb. Oh, now I got rid of that. Well, I think I got rid of that problem, but you know what? Here's this other problem. Now I'm gonna get rid of that one. Whack! I'm gonna kick that one to the curb. Oh, the mole just stepped in. Boom! I'm gonna step on that mole. It really is like that. It's like a whack-a-mole. The more we focus on problems, the more problems there seem to be to focus on. It just simply seems to be the way it works. So instead of focusing continually on problems, which we're taught to do when we're really little, and we're taught at school, the idea that we're presenting here is focusing first on what you want, and yes, there's a place for problem solving. If you're gonna get out of the building and the building's on fire, yeah, you better get out of that building. No, you're not gonna sit there and do a Zen thing at that point. However, uh, when it comes to creating, it's just not the same thing. We want to do it differently. And this stuff works. We've been working it. <laughs> any other thoughts on this? Or anybody else have some reflections? Any, any what's landing for you? Hey, <coughs> okay. very good. So focus on what you want to create. You're going to have some fun with this. This is a lot of fun, actually. This is a great deal of fun. Thanks, Kimberly, and thanks, Suzanne, for that was for sharing that example. That's a great example of yeah. how a vision is the way to go in terms of creating what you want in a in a library renovation. I'm curious if there are people, and I won't make you um, hold the mic if you don't want to. So just a show of hands. Um, if this is something that you have seen work in your life before. Um, a, ma a vision that you've then seen come to fruition. And, and sometimes it's like, oh yeah, I made that happen. And other times you kind of go, whoa, that's weird. That's how that worked, right? And, and you know, the universe is conspiring somehow. Did you have a question or are you just show, well, show of hands? <laughs> show of hands, okay. I'm very excited, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, so, um, so Kimberly brought this concept of creative visioning from her training to me, and it immediately resonated with me because I, like some of those hand raisers in the audience, had seen it working in my life. Like I know that there are times when I've said, I want this, and you know, you, there's different concepts that people have about you, you have to say it out loud, or your vision board, or your blah, 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 and then, and then it, it happens. And it does seem sort of, you know, you can put any sort of term on it that you want in terms of, you know, magic or the universe or, um, you know, spiritual or religion or however you want. But um, I, had, I had it kind of more in that way of this sort of like, huh, interesting that that happens. But when Kimberly brought me this concept, what I realized is that it's actually um, this concept of, of the pull from the vision, the, the current reality to the vision, there's actually a, a pull in that direction, similar to she's talking about the river and naturally flowing. And um, I never thought about it as a structure before. And once I started thinking about it as a structure, I realized how I could use it in all aspects of my life. And I was made conscious of something that I'd been using sporadically with successful outcomes. And now I understood it in a way that helped me to utilize it consciously to create momentum. 
So when we become aware of it, we can more frequently utilize it to move in an advancing structure. It's a tool that works. If, if you bring it consciously to your work and your personal life, you'll see the difference. It's simple, but it's not easy. So what is your vision? Focus on what you want to create, not on problem solving. And this is a, this is a tough one because a lot of times you'll think you're creating a vision and then on closer inspection, like do marketing better, you go, oh no, actually we're just trying to solve a problem here. Where we want it, what we really want to do is say, we want to reach a wide audience. We want to engage new users. That's the vision, not do marketing better. Oh, I'm right, and, and, and there we are. Okay, so we, utilize this in our marketing and communication committee. And so instead we said, okay, what's our vision? Not do marketing better. It's about, you know, that the community knows about the resources, that we have well-designed materials. So when we go out and speak to audiences, we say, okay, here are the, here are the things that, that we have available to you. And that the library is well-known and, and regarded in the community. And people know what we're, you know, what we offer. So that was our vision. Next step is, what's the current reality in relationship to the vision? So that's the other um, important piece is you actually look at, okay, you've said your vision, now you, you kind of do this, um, how are we now in relation to that particular vision? So we have this, you know, oh, well the community's not aware. And we don't have the materials widely available. And the library is not necessarily top of mind. So the current reality is very specifically related to your vision. And then, then you can build the steps to get from your current reality to your vision. I also think that one of the things that we have a tendency to do is say, we name our current reality first, and then we say, okay, well, I wanna go here. Well, that, then you're, prob you're back into the problem solving mode. So um, it is this, simple yet difficult thing to move out of what we're all used to doing. I mean, I think we're socialized and trained to, to like fix the problem, right? And this is probably my, my um, biology degree hat would say that that's, you know, in our biology to try and solve something, solve a problem. But we can move beyond that. So we think about our vision, our current reality, and then the steps that move in the direction. And we wanna focus on the large steps to start with. Don't get down into the nitty gritty. We'll get to that. But we just talked about, okay, what are the steps we're going to get from our vision, from our current reality to our vision? We're going to create branded materials, keep our audience engaged and informed, engage non-library users with the resources. So this is what it ended up looking like in that format. All right, uh, all right. So the good stuff. What did marketing accomplish once we had our vision? Um, so once we were able to move beyond problem solving, you know, we weren't just saying let's do marketing better. We had our ideas. We were clear with what we expected to happen. Um, we we had these action steps, which you could also think of as goals or objectives if you're used to that in a strategic plan. So one example was, let's create branded materials for easy brand recognition. So we had recently, um, our city had recently done like a brand redesign. So we all got new city logos. We all had a new font that we needed to use and colors, our top colors, the bar, we called it pea green and bright green and the yucky green. <laughs> Um, they weren't really serving us, and so we um, we decided to hire a company, which seemed unheard of for us. Like we're a s smaller, medium size. It's hard for me to tell for uh, our size of a library. We we hired a company to help us add to our pea green colors, um, and so we got this lovely look. Um, so in addition to our green, that is our primary color for the library, we got you know, this cherry pink, 
a orange crush candy color and this yellow. I mean, there were even, even fun names. Um, and so we were able to bring those all in, and I know this is a busy slide, but it shows the different ways that we were able to advertise different things, but still have a cohesive look. Um, so next slide. Another thing we wanted to work on was keeping our current audience engaged and informed. So we focused on our social media engagement, and we created monthly library e-newsletters, we're able to see an increase in program attendees, our book sales, um, which are a fundraiser for our library. Uh, those are making more money because we are intentional with our advertising for it. Um, and it's great to be able to share these stories with our friends of the library board, our library foundation, to tell them when we're asking for money we are getting more people, we would love to have some extra money to help with our marketing efforts. Um, next slide. Engage with non-library users. So um, this one has more of a lengthy story. So, don't go to the next slide yet. Uh, when you know your vision, when you know what you are working towards, you feel like, or it may seem like, things are magically falling into place. Um, Jenny was kind of alluding to this earlier, but what's actually happening is that you've done the work, you've set your vision for what you want, and you are able to sift through any new information when you're making new interactions, like here at OLA, when you are seeing emails about new grant opportunities. Um, you can kind of filter it through this thought, will this help me reach my vision? And that will just kind of pull you forward. So Jenny happened to be at the table when Recology, our waste management company, said that they needed to spend a bunch of money on like waste reduction. And it's like, oh, the <laughs> library, we're the queen of like waste reduction, reduce, reuse, like we're recycling all these books. And so they helped pay for a mailer to our city residents, and you can go to the next slide, and um, all of the towns near us that don't have their own home library. And so it told them that the library is so much more than books. So this is a like a brochure, pam or like a two-sided pamphlet, but we adapted this into um, a large postcard mailer. So something that was professionally designed and mailed out to all of these residences. It's something that we never thought would be possible, but it just kind of fell into place and it was like, it was just the right step forward to get more non-library users into our library. So we've had many more library card registrations due to this. We've had many interactions with people who said, what, you have bakeware at your library? You know, they, they didn't know what our library was. The library is still thought to be just books and we are so much more than books. Um, if you are now wondering more about the visioning process, I'm gonna pass it off to Kimberly, and she will walk you through some creative visioning. Yeah, we're gonna do an exercise at this point. So, everybody have a pen, paper, device, something ready to go? Okay, it's gonna be fun, It'll be a lot of fun, I promise. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to think of your vision. So think of your vision right now, something you want to create, and what you want to do is you're creating this for no other reason, not to get away from a problem, and you want to create it. So think about something. Now this could be, this doesn't have to be at your library, but it can be, of course. It can be in your personal life. Just think of something. Something you would like to create and enjoy. And then, and we're going to give you time to kind of work on this. When you do this, what I'm going to want you to do is put with this the feelings of it, the thoughts about it, what it looks like, who's there, you know, everything that has to do and surrounds this creation. Think about everything that surrounds this creation. Then, once you think about everything that surrounds this creation, you get all the sense of including your feelings about it. Once you do that, the next step is, is to step out of that 
and go into where you are now in relationship to that, your current reality in relationship to what you want to create. And that will also include all your feelings about it, even if they're terrible, <laughs> even if you're very unhappy about it. So an example of this, let's say it's a personal example. Let's say you want to be healthier. So maybe the, the, the creation is optimal health or being healthy and vital. That's just an example on a personal level. Perhaps you want to create something at your library. So it's like, okay, I want to create a system within circulation to make it easier for my patrons to do such and such or something within a program. I want to create a program that will bring in this community that I've never, that's not come into the library before. It could be something with your library or something personal if you wish to do that. Because this works with everything. So where, so what it is that, you, that your current reality is, all the feelings behind that, who's there with that. From there, what you do is you step back into that vision, into that end result. And you get that feeling, you just kind of embrace that, just get all that again. And just um, sense that out. You can write some more notes if you want to. And then once you've done that, what is a step that you can take in that direction? And Jenny's going to talk a little bit later about something called telescoping, where you're taking multiple steps. But you're always starting with one step, because there's always something that you can do. There's always an action that you can take, always. It isn't like something to do. It's just an action that you can take to move you from your current reality to your vision. See, we start with the vision, we go to the current reality, we go back to the vision, and then uh, what is an action that you can take. And we're gonna give you several minutes just to journal about this or type on your device. Some people are still writing. Some people maybe are checking their email <laughs> or Facebook, but hopefully at least some of you did the, whole, the, did the exercise. Um, is there anybody who would like to share? We're not gonna make anybody share. I'm gonna share mine. I didn't do the whole exercise, but oh, awesome. Is this working? Yes. Okay. 
Sorry about that. Uh, so this may not be what you're looking for because I'm not a librarian. I'm a board member. Okay. Uh, but um, my vision is um, that at the end of each board meeting, all the board members would leave feeling very satisfied about what we just accomplished. That's my vision. Uh, so should I go to the current reality next? <laughs> the current reality, I think, is at least for some board members, that uh, they're all committed. They all believe in what they're doing and so forth. But my sense is, I mean, nobody gets to the meeting until about 30 seconds before it starts. And they all mostly disappear afterwards, right, right at, after the meeting is over. And it just feels kind of like work a day. You know, it's sort of, oh, we got, we got it done. We got through another meeting. We showed up. Uh, and those sorts of things. But I'm not sure that there, at least in some cases, that the motivation goes beyond that. And that's not a criticism. You know, I think everyone feels like they're contributing and uh, that this is important, but I'm not sure that they feel really good about it. <laughs> you know? And I, want, I, would like, I would like that to happen. You know, I, I mean, and I would, I would like to feel that way after every, every board meeting, and I don't. And I'm the board chair. I run the meetings. You know? so, uh, and since, since it's volunteer work, I, I want people to feel truly joyful about it, that, you know, that, it's, that they like what they're doing. So, so, and I think this is a component of it. So the, my first, the first action step I'm going to do, and I was, actually it's kind of interesting because I was thinking about this on my walk this morning. I've only got, I, I, I'm uh, up for re-election today, and I may or may not be on the board after you know, June 30th and so forth, but uh, if I am, uh, I, I decided on my walk, this is one thing we're gonna, I hope we're going to talk about on the, in the, in the retreat this summer and so forth. So the first thing I'm going to take a talk is, is that the, the person who's likely to be president of the board next year, I've been president for <coughs> two years, uh, I'm, uh, is, uh, she's in her second year on the board, um, she's um, incredibly capable and motivated. She's <coughs> wonderful. I'm so glad that she was elected. It's fantastic. Is I'm going to talk to her about how she feels about meetings, and uh, how about how the meetings go, and how she feels after the meeting, and uh, how the board operates during meetings, and are the are the discussions robust, and uh, those, those kinds of things. So that's that's the first thing I'm going to do. Thank you. Can you will you state your vision again? Well, I'm still trying to articulate that. So. Uh, what I know, and you, you talked about talking about your feelings around the vision, and I think that's very important. Uh, I want to feel as though um, that I, I want to feel very satisfied. At, at the end of every meeting, uh, I want to feel very satisfied about how we went about it, what we accomplished, uh, and those, and I want to feel uh, joyful about it. That's what I want. Those are the kinds of feelings I'm going for, because I think that if that's the case, um, will be much more productive and, and useful to our community and so forth, and to our library staff and so forth. You know, it, it will work better for them as well. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes. That was great. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate, oh, we've got another person who's interested. Yes. Hi, I'm Hillary, um, and I'm a youth services librarian too, in a public library. And I guess a personal um, vision I would have is to increase the number of library users um, who take ownership or to collaborate with them rather than simply have that relationship of service, you know, I take what you're giving. So, transaction. Tra yeah, yeah, well, and and this is a positive thing, it's not a negative feeling. I mean, I, everyone loves, or most people love that all the things you can get from a library, all the resources and story times and great programming. But what I get most joy from and, and what I'm observing from patrons where they are really uh, lighting up 
is when they are collaborating with us rather than simply taking what is offered at the library. And I can give some examples of that. And it's so inspiring to both me and to them. And when you say, jot down some of the feelings that you have with that, some of those feelings are empowerment, you know, empowering our users. Um, and um, there's joy there, you know, kind of genuine joy and surprise, you know, that kind of comes with empowerment sometimes when you had no idea that you had this in you. And uh, a couple of the examples, and I mentioned one yesterday in another session, and this is in with youth, but we're collaborating with our youth now to design on a piece of paper a um, critter or a vision of what would go around the automatic book return. There was a Yeti, and that, then we had someone said, we want to do a sun monster, and so we took their vision, put up their vision, and then, made, and then interpreted it. So that's a collaboration, and that proved to be really powerful for that family, and so we're moving that forward. Another thing we're doing is, in a collaborative way, is we listen, we hear people speaking in other languages in the library. So we've incorporated global stories. So the first Saturday of every month, we have patrons that we, um, who will lead story time and read stories and bring their own books or we can help them get their books. We'll have a craft from, you know, we'll talk with them throughout. What's an easy craft we can do while you're here from your um, home country? and the people that show up and so we we change from being a host to being a facilitator kind of that thing so changing up those relationships with the people that come in the library so taking something that's already a beautiful thing which is the public library and um, empowering everyone and making it an even more exciting place for everyone that kind of an idea Thank you for that. So I hear vision is empowerment and collaboration, and your current reality is you have a little bit of that yeah. and you want more. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much. I really appreciate those um, examples. Okay, so we are going to go into. Um, um, so we've shown you the creative visioning tool for our committee work. And then you have the opportunity to, on a, you know, on a smaller scale, um, although actually I love the examples, I mean, some of them were, were pretty big scale things, right? But a singular thing. Um, and now I wanna share with you how we used creative visioning to develop our library strategic plan. Okay. It's what? That's a pretty big thing. Yes, yes. So we actually get, did get funding for this, and all. there's a slide at the end that where we got the funding, and then we had a, a consultant as well, and that, that'll be on the slide as well. So we didn't just do this entirely on our own. Um, and this is still a um, uh, work in action. Um, but we basically, well, this, is, this is the strategic plan. We had our vision. Then we named our current reality. And when we started, our actions were, you know, 15, 20 things long. And we realized, okay, that's, those are, we need to, we need to um, consolidate our actions because how this works is that then, and this is where you get into the, the this is the cathedral and you want to get to the point where, okay, all the bricklayers know that the work that they're doing is actually creating, um, continuing to build the cathedral. So I was, I've been playing around with what's the best format to, to, so that everyone on staff can look at this and actually can all add some things, not to this primary document, but to their, there's a level one, two, three, four, however far it needs to go down to here's the work that we're doing. Um, you know, volunteer engagement committee, oh, we want to put on a party for our volunteers, I need to, you know, get the flowers and, and buy the soda drinks. Well, that's, you know, on level five, 
of what needs to be done. That obviously isn't going to be action step here on our major chart, but it will, you can track that back up. So, so that's how we ended up um, really consolidating our actions to, to build capacity and efficiency, engage with success, and create a safe and welcoming space. Oh, I was going to go into, so I thought, oh, Excel spreadsheet or um, website would be great but not everyone on staff is going to be able to get into the website and, and make the changes. Um, so actually, PowerPoint works really well because you can add links in PowerPoint. Thank you, Ellie. Um, and so we're gonna go with the build capacity and efficiency. And you, a, a staff could click on this. I could click on this. Uh, all right, well, click on this. <laughs> okay, well. It's PowerPoint, it works. Maybe it doesn't work on the... Anyway, okay. And so this is your level two, build capacity and efficiency. And you see here there's a variety of things that are... So those, the, the steps are broken down into further steps. One of them being build volunteer engagement. Of course, building capacity and efficiency, the more volunteers that we have engaged in a, in a meaningful way, the more capacity and efficiency we'll have. And so then you would click on that. And that takes you then to a level three of building capacity and efficiency where you have your volunteer engagement committee. And this is where we ended up with, um, we currently have four committees. We have more steps and actions that we want to create, but we weren't going to focus on all of them. So we decided to focus on four at this point in time, created those committees, um, and then from there, so one of these things you see here is the volunteer, um, oh, we'll, we'll do the build and share a Google form, and this will be so that all staff members in the library can see these are the, these are the volunteers, this, and then they can put in their requests, they can, and this is how, oh, well, all of this ties back to building capacity and efficiency. So even when I'm just saying, I need a volunteer to sew a, a curtain or something like that, that actually is stepping back up to we're building capacity and efficiency with that. So one Next more. Slide is volunteer. Yes, volunteer engagement committee. But this is the action steps of creating the Google form and what that will lead to. These are uh, still a work in progress, but this, um, if you can, if you choose to use these concepts, create your vision, name your current reality, action steps to get there, this actually can become a strategic plan and it can become a nimble strategic plan and one that, that actually everyone does engage with. And you may actually be able to go to your staff and say, do you know what our strategic plan is? And, they'll, and, and how the work that you're doing fits into this strategic plan and, and, and hopefully as we progress, we'll get to that point. And I think some of us, will do now. As I say, it's in it's a work in progress and as many, some of you probably know as you're uh, if you're if you're presenting at this um, conference, um, you may have had the same experience where we're learning about this as we're creating this presentation, looking back and saying, Oh, that's how that worked. Oh right, that's what we did. Um, so we've you know tidied it up for you here. Let's see. So takeaways. Visioning versus problem solving. Problem solving will solve a problem, but it won't get you what you truly want to create. And you've seen the tool, you've used the tool. The tool is simple, but it's not easy. Create your vision. Make sure that your vision is not just a problem that you're trying to solve in some sort of other type of language. This is truly what I want to see, what I want to create, as Kimberly says, what you want to create just because you'd love to have it created. State your current reality in relationship to your vision and then name the action steps and then break down those action steps into smaller steps and um, so that when you're breaking down those steps into smaller steps it's so that everyone understands how their contribution fits into the larger vision. And I think that using this will keep your strategic plan advancing. Using this will keep our strategic plan advancing. And we consider it a roadmap to building a cathedral. 
And I think I'll just stay here to end up. I would like to talk about that cathedral building. Think about your own cathedral. What is it that you want to create? A cathedral builder can be likened to an artist. The artist has, as we've talked about the artist before, the artist has this vision in mind, this end result. And you can do this with your library too. What is your vision? You can create that wonderful library in the same way. And then, as you're conceiving of that end result, just like the artist, you're applying the paint. It's a different type of paint for a youth services library, but it's paint. <laughs> Only the clay youth services libraries do that a lot. And so do and so do we in other departments. So you're molding the clay, applying the paint, taking the action. And this is not to fix a problem. This is just merely to create, just because you want it. That's all it is. You just want it. And when you create this way, it builds some momentum. It becomes a type of transcendence almost. If that, and it just seems like that, but it's actually just the tension. You're learning, you're applying, you're building success to your next creation. That's what you're doing. Now, this is the creation process. This is how creation works in the physical world. It's philosophically neutral. However, it's highly successful. And you'll find that it leads to the building of that beautiful cathedral, which is a metaphor for your vision because you all have a vision, you all have many visions in your life and for your library and for the other organizations or committees or um, activities that you're involved in, you're for your families. You all have a vision for different things. So it's philosophically neutral but highly successful in building that. So when you're using creative structure, you're actually promoting learning. You're promoting learning and cooperation and when it becomes collective there becomes a shared vision it takes off there's a momentum to it an artist makes up the creation and libraries you can do the very same thing make up what it is you want to create it's your imagination you make it up this is not making up facts like we were talking about at the beginning it's making up what you want to create that comes from your imagination so I'd like to end with some thoughts from Robert Fritz. He has a wonderful quote about the process of creating that I'd like to share with you today. And that is this. What distinguishes leaders from laggards and what distinguishes mediocrity from this wonderful success is the ability to uniquely imagine what could be what could be? Today, we've given you the tools to do just that. Now it's up to each and every one of you to create it. Create it. Thank you very much for your time, and we are open to questions, comments, learnings, thoughts, complaints. <laughs> we, are, we are open to all of it. Problems? <laughs> no. We're open to all of it, so you know, please feel free to share, and we would love to hear what you had to take away from this presentation today. Thank you. Uh, question over there? Yeah. Do you want the mic? Um, I think I, this is loud enough, right? Okay. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm Holly Mills. I'm with Jackson County Library Services. In the last handful of years, um, we've undertaken a number of, I think, vision-driven initiatives. Um, and then, of course, along the path, there's like hiccups, unforeseen things, weird stuff happens, um, and have kind of found ourselves back in that problem-solving, back in that like whack-a-mole pattern. Can you guys talk about um, like bumps in your process as you? worked on these action steps to carry out the vision and kind of like how do you how do you like recommit to the vision or kind of like stay in that mode rather than you know like getting pulled out of it by kind of like everyday challenges that arise. 
Okay, so I feel like I'm a very much so a boots on the ground sort of person, so I wanted to talk, and Kimberly can do more upper level things. But for the marketing committee, we've had like staff turnover during this time of figuring out what we're doing. I've worked with several other staff members who are no longer at our library. I've worked with a volunteer who's out of the country but gonna move into a position and we'll be helping with marketing. And this document really is a living organism. We are able to kind of keep it up to date and I, I think Jenny uses the word nimble. We're able to move nimbly within it. Um, just the structure of it allows us to kind of see and document what we're doing and why. And sometimes there might be times where it's like, okay, this made sense because we were experiencing this pressure from um, our district or something. I, I, and, and things might not make sense anymore, but you'll have your overall vision. Again, like marketing, what my, my, my lead vision, what that marketing fits under is engage with success. That's like pretty broad. Um, and it's just saying like, we are doing cool things at the library, how can we just promote it more? Um, so that's just like my little boots on the ground story, but Kimberly, I'm sure has more thoughts on the higher thinking. Yes, I do have some things to uh, express about that. Whenever you go for something you want, Whenever you do it, it's going to have this stuff come up. It's just sort of the way it works. And it's like it wants to distract you from what it is you want to create. And what you can do with that, think about drawing a circle. Okay, so think about here is my vision circle. I'm going to define this as my vision. Inside this is my vision. Now, I'm getting all the feelings of that and I'm connecting with that every day. I'm making a choice to connect with that vision right now. And this stuff's going on. This stuff is part of it. Over here is, I'm going to draw another circle. That's going to be my current reality circle. And that includes all those wacka things that are coming up right now. They're just driving me nuts and I want to kill them all. Okay, that's perfectly okay because that's part of the process. And those things will come up. They just will. And so here it is. This is it. I'm connecting back into that. This is okay. Just think of it like a dragon over here. It's okay. It can just stay over there. and It's all right. It's okay. It can be there. But this is what I'm creating anyway. In spite of all the things that are happening, I am focusing back onto that. This is what's going on. Here's where I'm focusing back into. What is an action step that I can take right now? And I'm going to take it. And this works. We've done this in you know, multiple, in multiple um, settings. And we've had, we even had this on getting set up here. You know, we wanted to get this recorded and nothing was working. And so I just kept focusing back on the vision. On the way here, we thought we were going to an electric car. <laughs> it was going down, 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 you know, on, and are we going to make it to Bend kind of thing. And we just kept focusing on, we're going to get to Bend. <laughs> yeah. We might have to stop and charge the car. <laughs> but we are going to get to Bend, and we are, and I just like, well, we're going to get to Bend on time. And we're going to get to Bend without having to rely upon secondary car, which is following us in the wake. So, you know, we're going to get to bed. We're going to be doing this, this, um, this presentation. My, present, my choice every day was on a magnificent presentation with my wonderful colleagues Jenny and, and Sam here, you know, having a wonderful presentation that would serve all of you. And things came up along the way that didn't, you know, we had all kinds of stuff. There were the whack-a-moles that came up to say, hey, you're not going to be able to do this. And, uh, oh, I had a sore throat. Oh, well, you know what, I'm focusing back on this. And we're going to create this regardless of this stuff that's over here. We're just going to keep focusing back on the vision. So whenever you have this stuff come up, and it's absolutely natural and normal that it does, every time you have this stuff come up, you focus back into the vision and you allow that to be there. That's just fine. It doesn't mean anything about you. It doesn't mean anything about the vision. It doesn't mean anything about anything. It's just the thing over here which is part of the current reality. You fold that current reality circle, 
into the creative process. The creative process is the vision, the current reality in relationship to the vision, which is always changing, so you have to constantly do this, because it's always changing, and what is an action step that I can take right now. And if you are into doing anything like some deep breathing or meditation, that can be very helpful as well to get you into that centered place. But what is an action that I can do right now? Maybe take a walk is the action you can do right now. And sometimes the actions are you do nothing. Sometimes when you get this, you get a blank and you get to make it up. Or the action might be nothing. Because whenever there's a creation, there's several, several different types of creation. One is there's the active process of creation where we are doing and doing and doing. This is the way we're used to thinking about it. However, there's another process, and that is that we're watering the creation. So when you're putting, planting a garden, you think about gardens in spring, you're not putting the seed in the ground and digging it up the next day to find out what's going on with the seed. No, it needs time. Every creation takes time. It doesn't happen immediately, unless it's a very short little thing like going to the ice cream store kind of thing. But every creation takes time. And so it's like, it's just a consideration that wherever you are right now is okay and there's no judgment on it. Whatever's going on is okay and there's no judgment on it. This is what I wanna create. This is what I'm creating. And here's where I'm at now, there's an action I can take and maybe the action is waiting. Maybe the action is holding that tension. Maybe the action is that you need to go outside and take a walk. Maybe the action is that if you're a meditator, you need a little bit of time to relax. Maybe it's to take a bubble bath. <laughs> it, can be, it can be a variety of different things, but you get to make up what that action is if nothing's coming to you. Sometimes what will come to you when you do this, this exercise is you'll just get a symbol of something. You'll just see something. Well, what does that mean to you? You get to make that up too. Because this is just an imaginative process. This has nothing to do with facts or anything else. This is about using your imagination to create and using this process to create what it is you want. Uh, did that answer the question? Okay. Maybe a little more you want. Why don't you give me talk and I'll talk. There we go. Jackie? So this is a practical question for you, Jenny, is how do you monitor the status of all this stuff? <laughs> yeah, okay, so the question is how do I monitor all of this stuff? And that is difficult. And part of this process is that I shouldn't have to because the staff, the bricklayers, understand the greater vision and they understand how their, what they're doing fits into the greater vision. And I need to be able to trust that the way that they're going to decide to um, do these activities will fit into the greater vision. An example recently, um, we did have our volunteer engagement party. And in the past, I have always been very involved in that process. And I was almost entirely not involved in the process this time, and it was an amazing event. And there were a few times where I was a little bit nervous, and I stuck my, you know, stuck my hand in to say, what's going on? And I did have a few meetings with just, okay, tell me how you're going about this. But part of the process is I need to, because I can see, I can see, and they can see where those steps go and how it relates back, I should be able to not have to monitor entirely and then meet every once in a while. So how often do you revisit the whole vision? I mean, is that... um, this is still new for us and um, not as often as I would have liked to, but I will say that our committees are very active. Our committees are very engaged in what they're doing. And um, I think, this is interesting because Kimberly's reaching her hand for the microphone, but I realized maybe, maybe, no, I'll hand it off, but maybe part of this is that the tension has been created. We created vision, we created our current reality, and the river will automatically flow in the direction because we've already created that um, desire to move in that direction. Did I get it right? Is that what you were gonna talk about? <laughs> um, yes? Um, have you ever had a 
have you had like a hard time getting staff to like kind of buy into the mission? Like, are there staff members who prefer to do the whack a mole problem solving thing, or like kind of like? I don't think so. I am going to go to our next slide. Don't they all look just everyone just happy? <laughs> just happy. <laughs> I think no. I think people. Um, you know, uh, this isn't. You know, it's not like. This was a brand new, th that the process of how we're doing this is new, but the the vision, that's not something that's new to, um, to the staff. Um, I would say though that, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on Ellie and Rita in the back of the room. There are staff here. Did you learn from this? Listening to this um, today, <laughs> your presentation yeah. today. Yes, I did. Yeah. So I think part of it too is that these concepts, the entire staff doesn't know doesn't know these concepts. I'm still learning the concepts. Sam's still learning the concepts, but it's working. It's working anyway. I want to add about also just like we had an all-day staff meeting where we went through all these levels as well. So that helped with us. We didn't know the action plan there yet, but it did help us kind of all be on the same page. And they can, yeah, and you can see the steps. Also, we're different. The committees are also made of different work groups. So, marketing and communications, I have front desk circulation, adult services, and youth services people. So, it's a fun, it's fun to work with coworkers that I don't normally get to work with. So, I think it's a good morale booster as well. And uh, just very, very quickly, once you set up this process, everybody doesn't need to know about it. You've set up the pro you've set up the creative structure, and the whole team does the whole library does not need to have to understand all of this. It's the process that's set up that's going to create that momentum. And we have a question back yeah, two here. Two more questions in the orange. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Sam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm Emily David from Springfield Public Library and History Museum, and I just had a process question. One of your slides said that the um, this is for 22-23. So is this a one-year strategic plan, or, and then you revisit, or how are you, how is that set up? Right. Um, we could, we should, we will. It may be that the vision stays the same. But of course, current reality is changing, which we've talked about. And while I think that our actions, our primary actions will remain, um, maybe we say, oh, we've, this uh, marketing thing, it was a lot of work at the very beginning. It's, it's flowing much better now. And so we may be able to say, um, oh, let's see, okay. That we're, gonna, we're going to say that works, that's working, we're now going to start working on something else. And uh, the woman, oh, okay. I was curious what your other committees were. There's the volunteer engagement and marketing and communications. What are your other two working committees? Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we have processes and procedures and we have the Behavioral Response Committee. <laughs> it's a very kind way of saying <laughs> difficult patrons. <laughs> um, and that feeds back into um, create a safe and welcoming space. So build capacity and efficiency was the volunteer engagement and processes and procedures. The engage with success trickles down to the marketing committee and create a safe and welcoming space trickles down to the behavioral response committee. And again, there will be other committees that would and could be formed, you know, in terms of, oh, actually, you know, create a safe and welcoming space. Just realize we're creating a HVAC overhaul committee. <laughs> and that would be part of the comfortable space. The exciting thing. Yes. <laughs> we didn't bring that one to you. <laughs> Other questions? Did you present to your board this idea? So um, we are lucky in that we don't have a governing board. 
I think we're lucky in that. We have a library foundation board and we have a Friends of the Library board. The Friends of the Library board paid for the some of the um, uh, consultant. consultant, thank you, and training. And so they've heard a little bit about this, but I think I'm, I'm ready now to bring more of it to them. And then the Library Foundation board did hear a little bit about it from the marketing committee because we, I'd actually, that was a success story where I'd gone to the foundation board two years in a row and said, I need money for marketing. And they've said, well, what are you going to do with it? And I didn't know. And so they didn't give me the money. And two years in a row, third year came in and said, we have a plan. And then we were able to get the money. So yes, we brought it to the foundation. The, those two boards, I have not yet brought it to the city council. And this may be more in depth than the city council would want to see in here. <laughs> Another question? I'm Adrian from Sherwood, and I'm wondering about if you have any public input into the visioning at any stage of this. We did not. Um, that would be would or could be something that that we you know at some point in time, but we we didn't at this point. We were you know we still we were creating this, starting to create it in 2021, where that was still sort of frowned upon, probably to bring a big group of people together. So not at this point in time. Interesting to consider that. And Jackie? Going back to the slide where you have the post-its, what was that? Oh, that's, so th that was not part of this presentation. It was maybe going to be, but this path of least resistance for managers, that's what our um, consultant facilitator said, y'all need to read this. And then this was our visioning exercise at the, at the beginning. And who did that? Um, the facilitator consultant led the library supervisors through that. So this is the other thing that was interesting to me, this process, and I had to really reframe, and this goes to um, Adrian's questions as well, this concept of, oh, you need to bring in the community and they're gonna tell you what your vision is and you need to involve entire staff to figure out the vision. And she was very much, no, 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 no. It's your vision. What's your vision? And I struggled with that a little bit because that's not how we've been, you know, trained and taught for a really long time. But there is something to that in terms of, you know, taking leadership and saying, I want to create this thing because I want to create it. And that's a little, that sounds, it's, it's even a, a little bit uncomfortable saying, but it, you know, if you know what you're doing and you feel good about what you're creating and, and it resonates with people, it can work. It works. It does work. <laughs> yeah. What book, um, I was looking and I didn't have to buy books by Robert Fritz. <laughs> Is there one that you recommend as a starting? I would say this one and I actually um, brought it and it's got sticky notes in it and you're welcome to take a look at it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and the other one that's really good is Path of Least Resistance. is an excellent book. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, path of Least Resistance for Managers is yeah. this one. And then that's there's the also one. one that's just Path of Least Resistance. It's also excellent. Okay, so that's <laughs> Yes, my okay. favorite. My okay. favorite, um, and I have a couple others, but that's one. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all, all of your time and attention and engagement. It was lovely.